All right, so we've created the ability to actually send out emails, and from those emails, we can actually send a formatted email that includes some sort of link and also a message to activate that person's email or confirm that that email exists. Um, so the way we're gonna actually write that activation key is by using this library called Hashlib. Now what Hashlib does is it's a secure hash that's created from a string. Now there's a lot more to it than that, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a string, create a hash that looks like this, and that is a set length um, as far as how long it's gonna be. It's gonna always be the same set length depending on which um, actual hash creator that we're using. So which our actual constructor, also known as a function to actually create the hash, whichever one we're using is gonna be set as far as the length goes. And then it's gonna give us some string of digits and, and numbers, or digits and characters is the same thing. Um, and so we can use that to actually confirm this email. So um, that might get a little complicated. So all we're gonna do is actually just jump right into doing it. The first thing I need to do up here is I'm gonna import a few things. First off, I'm gonna import random, and then I'm gonna import hash lib. So this is gonna be the Python hash lib library. And then down here, we'll do if email is created. Uh, before I actually create the hash and do all this stuff, I'm gonna make a function down here that we can test inside of the Python shell. So the first thing I'm gonna do is short hash equaling to hash lib dot sha1, and then it's gonna be the string of random dot random. And then after that, we wanna get the hex digest. Okay, so let's actually see what this looks like in Python. Now, first off, I'm gonna go ahead and copy these and put these down here too. So all, the only reason I'm writing these out right here is so we can test them. So copy this and type out Python, press enter or paste these in, press enter. Oh, looks like I did something incorrect here. Not hex digest, but hex digest. Okay, now paste that in. Now short hash gives us this as our result. Great, so that's what we should expect, right? We wanna actually see that. And we only wanna get a few of these because this is what we're gonna call as our short hash. So we're gonna only get a few of these right here. So we actually do it now and then short hash, we see that we have five digits uh, or five characters and numbers. So notice we have characters and we used random.random. .random. Well, what does random.random .random do? So random.random, .random, that creates a random string of digits between zero and one. Um, so that's something that is of note too. You could use that in math functions and stuff like that. But so now we have this short hash. We wanna create another hash based off of our username. So let's say username equals to, let's just use jmitchell3 for now. And now this is where we're actually gonna create our activation key here. And it's gonna be, first off we'll say the activation key is equal to hash lib.sha and it's gonna be the short hash plus the username. And short hash is, okay, so we have short hash plus username, and then we wanna do the hex digest. And that will be our activation key. So let's actually see what this looks like. Copy this, paste it in here. And if we do activation key, we now have a key that's gonna be well, fairly unique, and it's gonna be made up of from the actual username that we set here. So uh, it's likely that the hash will not be repeated for those reasons, for doing the short hash as well as our username. It's gonna be giving us a pretty unique result uh, for our actual activation key. Now, it's possible that they can be duplicated, so we'll co copy that later, but what this also allows us to do, not only is it a good way to have an activation key but it's and being unique and secure, but it's also a good way to having um, just a string of digits that are unique that aren't likely going to be uh, generated again because of how we're actually generating it in the first place. Okay, great. So now that we've got this, we've created our hash key. Let's actually put it down into 
this function now and go ahead and we can get rid of this now. So now when the new user is created, it's going to create a hash and then it's going to grab the username, which we want to get the user's username. So not my username, but username user dot username. Uh, another method that I've seen done is doing the from the email. So base and domain being string of user dot email. And then we split it by the at sign. That's another way to do it. Or, well, actually, we would call this username because we call that username. So that's another another type of option that you could do. This might be a good way as well. So let's actually just leave it as that. So this creates our activation key. So now we have to actually set this activation key to the email confirmed model, right? So we need to set it in here. So that's fairly simple. We just created the email confirmed. So we can grab the instance of it right here and go email confirmed dot activation key equals to activation key. Because it's this is gonna be this, and then this is related to the model here. All right, so now we can actually save this email confirmed dot save. And now we've created that activation key and we could go one step further and actually do the activation email, right? So let's go ahead and uncomment this out now. And now that we have this email set up, this should actually work just fine. So let's go ahead and go back into our signal and doing email confirmed dot and we want to use the activate user email instance method and there we go so i can get rid of all this stuff and i'm also going to get rid of that username and i'm going to turn this back into being base just make it nice and clean okay so what's going to happen here we're going to create a new user if it's created it's going to get or create that user stripe and then it's going to email that user so we actually need to test this out. Uh, I do want to make a few notes as this is actually interpreted from a package called Django registration. So you can actually see Django registrations code online. I just did want to make note of that because we are using how they did their activation keys because I thought it was done really well. All right. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and do this activation email and actually run it. So what I'm going to do now is close out of this Python, go to exit, clear this out, Python manage.py, run server. All right, and then also um, back into the server, I'm just going to close out that window. We're going to go home, and I'm going to have to actually create a user that has an actual email so we can actually use it. So, um, so we can actually see the result, otherwise we, we, we won't see it. So I'm gonna make a new user called ABC, and then I'm gonna just change this main user to a different email for testing purposes. All right, so let's go ahead and log out, and then accounts register. All right, so now I'm gonna do ABC, your email, codingforentrepreneurs at gmail, whoops, codingforentrepreneurs at gmail.com, some password, and hit join. Notice it's loading. It's gonna take a moment for it to load. And it looks like it said email confirmed does not have activate user email. So let's see what's going on. It looks like we had ran into our first little issue here. So email confirmed instance. Let's go back into our model. And it seems to be that it didn't want to run that. Okay, so we saw that error with the instance method. What happened was, is there's a little space right here. So if we just remove that space and make sure that this is within that class and we want, might wanna do that with the email user as well, uh, that's a way to fix it. Now, let's actually go into our admin and see if the other stuff worked though. If we go into admin and we see email confirmed, notice that we have a new email confirmed and we have this activation key set up for ABC. Perfect, that's what we wanna see. And then we also want to see user stripes and ABC has theirs right there. All right, great. So that means that it's actually working up until the point where that model instance, we had that little error. And I believe is because of that spacing 
issue that we had. Okay, so now with that spatial issue being gone, let's go ahead and go back to accounts register. Oh wait, actually I'm gonna have to delete my most recent user that I created, ABC. So I wanna actually use that email again. So go into accounts, register, and then ABC, coding for entrepreneurs, one, two, three, one, two, three, hit join. And uh oh, looks like I have another error. And it's a send mail argument after star star must be mapping, not tuple. Uh, so what I'm guessing right here is this is actually not gonna be star star, but just keyword args. And that would be star star. So I actually kind of messed up on that little part right there. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. Oh, it's got already created the user. So I gotta go in and delete that user real quick. Oops, delete. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, going back to accounts, ABC, coding for entrepreneurs, one, two, three, one, two, three, join. And all right, so no errors happened. So let's actually go ahead and check the email. All right, so now here's that email. Notice that we have our activation key and that looks like the right one, although we don't know for sure. So let's leave that. I'm just gonna pull this over to the side here for a second and pull this over so we can actually double check the activation key. So we go into our admin and then use email confirm. That first one I'm pretty sure is our ABC and it says A20C15. A20C15 looks like it's the same. A79, A79. So I think it's safe to assume that it is the same activation key. So there we go. We've actually created the activation key and we can actually email it out to our actual user, and which is great. So that actually does work. So from here on out, we can just assume that that is actually working. And notice that I used localhost instead of this right here. So if I click on localhost and try to do that activation key, notice that SendGrid has some stuff here, but it takes me to localhost and then I get this page not found. That's because we haven't actually set up are activate and accepting that URL quite yet, but it does, localhost also works as well as that. So it's the same thing. Those are interchangeable, uh, but this is still our app. So if I just get rid of all this stuff, I'll see that it's still our store there. All right, great. So that also means that now all we need to do is actually create a way for them to activate this email by setting up a view to do so. Uh, and we'll do that one in the next one. See you then.